Martina, the role of the European Parliament in this discussion, where do you see it as MEP? Thank you very much for inviting, first of all, and thank you for all these data and studies and research. I will need to go a little bit deeper with the professor in his graphics because not everything I understood, but of course, a policymaker contribution it can look a little bit uh, boring. Uh, in front of data and evidence and researches. But I want to tell you that we absolutely need it because politics must be based on evidence. We cannot do it the other way around. We cannot create evidence uh, because of politics. So thank you for that. And I think, uh, and this is the only point, I don't agree with Maria with her conclusions, that EU is doing already a lot, that there is not a resistance in Brussels to do something concrete. I think both the Commission, Parliament, all institutions are doing a lot, and even maybe not in systematic way, but in some different steps, directives, indications, recommendations, we are always including uh, financial education, always. So you can find it everywhere. I will give one concrete example. I was the reporter of New Skills Agenda for Europe, where we are talking, of course, about new skills, future skills for young generations, how can we prepare them for life and for labor market? So, of course, you talk about the specific skills for labor market, but on the other side, we have to talk about the numeracy, about the learning, the ability to use, to employ economic education in a real life. So, these are already points we are mentioning in New Skills Agenda, both Parliament, both Commission. So, as these are small things. Of course, you are right. We are not, uh, we don't have competence, full competence in education, but we can do these small recommendations. So, in a directive on more we can include an uh, article about financial education. Uh, in, uh, we, can, we can put together best practices from different member states, because this is exactly correct what you said, Maria. One fits all approach is out. We have to look at it very specifically, very individually. So we have to see case by case, best practices, look at what different actors in member states are doing. And uh, then what is very important, it's lifelong learning. So sometimes we have this tendency to look only at young people, at next generations, because we are preparing them for life. But of course, older generation and the aging population in Europe will be under pressure because of financial education, which was not enough for them. So there are different points that the EU is doing, and we absolutely need these research uh, studies and evidence, because without them, policymakers cannot take decisions. So thank you for that. If, if you are saying, Martina, that the EU is doing a lot already, uh, maybe the conclusion would be maybe it's either not doing enough mm -hmm. or it's not visible enough. Mm -hmm. Maybe financial literacy, financial education should be made more visible in lots of regulations, on skills, on capital markets Absolutely. unions, if you, if you want people to invest for their own pensions, in entrepreneurship, if you want people to develop Absolutely. entrepreneurial skills. May, maybe it should be more embedded and, and maybe made more clearly in the communications about all these topics that financial literacy is, is essential for these policies to succeed. Is there something uh, that you can do? Absolutely. I, I agree 100 percent, but you know, we have often this debate about how much competence should have EU for education, because we know what are the main goals, main skills for the future. But the education is still in the hands of member states, so maybe EU should provide more incentives uh, for member states to include financial education in mandatory curricula, if this would be right or not, or at least to, to give some incentives programs uh, to create lifelong training for adults or to do something specific for other tar target groups. So this is just a question of incentives and motivation from the EU level. I don't think that we are able politically to decide from today to tomorrow that we will uh, transfer uh, competencies from member states to, uh, to the EU level on uh, education. We are not so good to do it here today. But we can do these small incentives and small motivations for the member states.